have any people being paid by the CIA who are contributing to a major circulation American journal. We do have people who submit pieces to other to American journals. Do you have any people paid by the CIA who are working for television networks? This, I think, gets into the kind of uh, getting into the details, Mr. Chairman, that I'd like to get into in an executive session. Sure in a hurt You think you can treat me like dirt And then get away with it, honey Well, you got another thing coming now All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is your favorite show, The Vadio Show. And you know I like to name my episodes, and the name of this one is Music, Media, and the Matrix. Now, it's got a little extra on that name, yeah, I know, but we're going to explain as we go along, and I got somebody here that's going to help me guide you through this whole thing. My man, Kevin the Moose Anderson. How are you, my brother? Man, no complaints. Everything yes, is everything. How about you yourself? Know what? I'm doing good, and I'm feeling real good because this is my first time actually sitting down and seeing you, but I listen to you all the time on 88.1. Plug, got to do it. Lessons thank and you, jazz. Thank you, thank you. And I'm not going to tell them anymore. I want you to tell the people about who you are, what you do, and, you know, just give them a little bit of background. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Kevin the Moose Anderson. I'm the operations and program director at 88.1 WHOV. In particular, I host and produce the show that's called the World Famous Lessons in Jazz Series. And we uh, examine the relationship between jazz and hip hop. Uh, while I was enrolled in Hampton, back in the day a little back bit, a little bit, a little bit back in the day, uh -huh. I had developed a thesis that talked about jazz and hip hop. And the thesis statement just revolved around this. Uh, through hip hop or sampling music from the past, and not just limited to, uh, to jazz, it helped to create a new generation of jazz listeners, and it helped young folks to appreciate the music of the past even better. Mm -hmm. And y'all do a great job, man. I mean, just to hear the samples, where the samples came from, just connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. And that's basically why I had wanted to get you on this episode, because um, we're talking about music, media, and how it affects our society today. My first question to you would be, do you feel as if music and media has a negative effect on our society today? Uh, yeah, it, it has a tremendous negative effect. I mean, it's a good part of it, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the negativity is what's being magnified. Right, right, right. And so, you know, we, we were talking about this earlier. It just seems like the young folks are just really in tune mm -hmm. to everything they see on TV mm -hmm. or everything they hear on the radio. Mm -hmm. it, and it almost seems like... Uh, no one's really being who they could be or were made to be. They're kind of doing their best rendition of what they're seeing and hearing. That's what it seems like to me. Like everybody's trying to copy their favorite rapper, or, you know. It's uh, an image that they're, they're trying to sell. Uh, mm -hmm. This this producer guy named, um, what's my man name? Uh, damn, damn, damn. He did work with Mob Deep, uh, White Cat. Uh, the Alchemist. The Alchemist. Yeah, 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 I tell you yeah. from there. All right, so uh, producer guy, The Alchemist, mm -hmm. was at the station one time, and he said something I will never forget. He said that once you get into the industry, mm -hmm. it's like when you realize there was no such thing as Santa Claus. Mm. And so, you know, when he said that, that stuck with me and the guy I was working yeah. with, and we started to see it unfold 
the more we started being in radio. Right, right, right. And then you start to see about that image that mm -hmm. they create that they want these artists to maintain. Because, I mean, think about it like this. Who is rewarded for being positive? Uh, you don't see it. You really don't, don't see, see it. it. So for anybody that's aspiring to be a, a, a musician, a, a rapper, or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, the odds are really stacked against them. They don't mm -hmm. see anybody getting rewarded for, for right. uh, relaying positive. So even if I didn't sell dope, or I ain't really grew up like that. I'm going to put it in a song because that's what's selling. Exactly. So basically what's happening is, is, uh, uh, it's kind of an engineering, uh, social engineering for real. Oh, very much so. I mean, it's no coincidence that you can't hear anything positive on the radio. I thought I was the only one that was catching that. Nah, you got to ask yourself, man. You got to definitely ask yourself. And then think about, you know, the changes that have taken place in hip hop over the past 15, back. 20 years. Take me back. And that's another reason why I had you here. Take me back to where we were, let's say, 70s and 80s. Like, what did you see when it came to music and media and uh also reflecting from that because being the music and media is kind of the soundtrack to life what was happening around that time if you look at our so we're in 2015 mm -hmm. if you look at 1975 and the list of the top 10 songs mm -hmm. for that year just the titles of the songs uh -huh. reflected the mood for what was going on mm -hmm. i mean it was still pimping it was still drugs mm -hmm. it was still you know people abandoning their families, but the music didn't necessarily reflect that. One of the things I tell a lot of young guys that I come across that rap and, you know, they, they in the trap and so forth, and they're saying they're just repeating or telling people what the way see. what they Their see. Life, right. So 72, everybody's seen American Gangster. Yeah. 72, 73, the OJs, Teddy Pendergrass, Harold Melvin That's and the, the Blue Notes. That was playing but they weren't rapping about selling heroin. No. No. So, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they took a stance, mm -hmm. Wake Up Everybody, mm -hmm. you know, those those conscious songs that yeah. they produce. I just think, you know, folks need to take a stand. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it is up to us to say, you know, we're not going to stand for that. Yeah. I'm not going to let my kids listen to that. You know oh, what I mean? I'm not going to pay for those part, albums. Even. It is. And I want to get into it. I know we got to go to a break. But when we do come back, what I want to talk about more so is um, how do we take that back? What do we do? What do you propose that we do to try to get game back control? Because what's happening now is this is psychological warfare. That's what marketing is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When they market things to you, that burger is killing us <laughs> with every bite. You know what I mean? But with the nice, happy music, kids dancing and, you know, they throwing soda, popping soda in their mouth. It looks so fun. It's like the thing to do. But it's marketing and it's a trick to, on your mind. And I want to talk about that when we get back. This is the Badio Show. This is Kevin the Moose Anderson. And we'll be back after the break. Don't leave. A message from one of our proud sponsors. Someone once said, getting there is half the fun. From downtown to old town. Go past 365 connects you to entertainment, restaurants, friends. Go Pass 365. Find out more at gopass365.com. We got we got this just came up. Well, yeah, this gotta. We okay, gotta get, get into get, another. Right, but get him episode. in real quick. We're gonna try to get him out. But he, he got some. He got some stuff going on. Check him out. Yeah. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you all back to the People Show, the Vadio Show. And you know how they say this just in or hot off the press? Well, I just got one of those moments, so excuse me for reading, but today we have an exclusive with hip-hop trap star, Gutter Butter. His first album, I Can't Believe It's Not Gutter, and it went certified cubic zirconium and white gold plate. Is that such thing as that? Yeah. Okay, and he had singles like Bad Words Are Fun To Say and Disrespect Your Mama Lest She Bout This Life? Are y'all serious? Well, ladies and gentlemen, he, he promised to give us an exclusive on his music and on the industry, so help me to welcome Gutter Butter. How you doing, brother? 
Uh, you know, doing the show thing. It's good to see you, man. I'm glad to have you. Good to be seen, brother. Yeah, good yeah, to be nice. seen. I, I, I got to ask, you know, because I, I could move past it, but I got to ask. Yeah. The scuba suit, brother. You like this? It's nice. Look at the flip of the flippers. Look at the flick. Yeah, see, pretty much, um, I like to swim in my money. I just get right to it. Okay. That's what I like to do. And when I did in my swimming trunks, uh -huh. it was abrasive on my epidermis. Safety first. I wanted the protective layer <laughs> when I backstroke through my bucks. I can, I can understand you that. Dig? And I'm going to be honest with you. We don't usually have brothers like yourself Talented? on the show. And that, I, that Talented you Talented brothers? That what, you, you what are we saying? Well, you know, with the type of music, when I was reading the, um, the titles of the songs, we usually don't pro promote that type of thing here. But... You know, we got you here, uh -huh. and you, you had an exclusive about music and the industry. So, shoot. But you mentioned my songs. Well, you know, uh, uh, what were those titles again? Well, the song? there was the, the first album, like you said, was I Can't Believe It's Not Gutter. Okay. Um, however, right now, I'm promoting my new uh, album. Mm -hmm. That's why I got the Paris shirt on. Okay. You see the Eiffel Tower right there? That's a nice shirt. Yeah, man. that's Pimping in Paris is what I'm doing. Oh, okay. Uh, my first single, uh, Smack. Smack you so hard you can... Get my money. <laughs> oh. You like that? Yeah. That's nice yeah, how you pause. Yeah, Is it the pause in the titles? Pause. Yeah, that's nice. Pause. I like, oh, they yeah. like pause around here. That's what I heard. So okay. I get the people what they want. That's yeah, pretty good. Do. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Smack so hard you could <laughs> get my money. <laughs> See that? Yeah, I was happy waiting <laughs> yeah, for yeah, it yeah, kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, what, you did you, what did you come to actually say to the people? Well, they love me over there in Paris, first of all. Okay, I'm sure. They call me 200 pounds of Booth Bourguignon player. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what Booth Bourguignon is. <laughs> I have not, no clue. You're not cultured like that. But anyway, I'm up in the club, right? And I see this bad whoa, banging. Whoa, 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 whoa. This a family show. But, you know. Okay, what yeah. I okay, what I saw was this uh, packing Pomeranian. You that, did that what works. I'm going with it? That, I see. I you see, see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I see exactly. A little what rough, rough. I, yeah. I see. Yeah, going. you like that? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I see the young lady. I'm getting my bottle service. Uh huh. And then they proceed to play my Pimpin' in Paris song. Okay. So she hops up. Uh huh. She starts dancing uh, to the fertility dancers of our ancestry. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess Dan I kind of get dancing it. with all that fervor and yeah. passion. Yeah. 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 So um, I said to myself, maybe it was just an attack of conscience, but mm -hmm. I said, uh, uh, Pomerania, why is it that when they play my song? And they call you out of your name, not in, but out. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. Why is it that you dance with all the uh, erotica? Yeah. You know what and I said. And fervor. Yeah, and fervor. Yeah, That's yeah, that yeah. was the word. That, that was I, a good question to ask. Though. Yeah. So I asked her, and um, she said her, her her reply, which I've heard a million times before, mm -hmm. is, "I uh, well, you ain't talking to me." Hmm. In the song, I am calling this young lady uh, a shit zoo, if you will, a little I shit get it. zoo. I see where you, you going. You know, I, I see uh, you a going. feminine canine. I, I, you, you, yeah, okay, yeah. I get where you going. Can I talk to you, shit zoo? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. When I, when I yeah. do that, yeah. 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 and then yeah. you participate in it, uh -huh. then uh, I don't understand how you're you... are obviously how you, talking to yeah, them. Yeah, 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 I'm talking to you. Okay. Let's just be up, up front about it and still enjoy the music. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Let's I'm not lie to ourselves. And you know, I can't really argue with that because honesty is the best policy, but don't you feel as if you being that honest and straightforward, it'll mess up your sales, you know, when you let them know exactly how you feel about that? And a short answer, uh -huh. no. Okay. All right. There it is. Uh, okay. Well, Period. Well, I hear that, you know, those albums actually did very well. They hit the top of the charts on iTunes, so... That's commendable. I mean, that's a pretty big accomplishment. You know, your honesty up forward, up front mm -hmm. in the beginning makes me want to just clarify a few things. What you, what you mean? That iTunes you talking about, that's the lowercase i? Right. Tune, like the iPhone. Yeah, brother, my, my music is on the top of iTunes. You understand? Oh, like cartoon. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I Yeah, you see, yours is uh, Apple computer. Yes. Yeah, yeah, mine is Pineapple. I've computers. never heard of that. Never heard of pineapple? I'm about to Google. Yeah, that's yeah. by my man Craig Correa started that. Yeah, it's Craig Kinda Correa. Yeah. Like Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, little cousin. Craig Correa's, he started that. Uh, I'm going to have iTunes. to look that up. I mean... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all over there. Well, I mean, yeah. it's, it's still a, an accomplishment. Yeah, I'm number one so, downloaded on, yeah. on pineapples. That's, that's, yeah. that's awesome, man. It's not just a safe word anymore. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, from here, where do you go? Like... The album still sell, you still disrespect and let them know what's going on. Well, actually, I was working on something for, for your show. You what? understand? I was trying to get you on the hook. Oh, I... Yeah. I think you'd be with it. What is it? Progress is the process, you <laughs> 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 <laughs>
This is not just music I mean to do you harm. You understand? Yeah, yeah. That was the second one. The sophomore oh, okay. album. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And the last one is, uh, this music will desecrate your soul. Want to buy it? Uh, well, I'm sure some guys in the back uh, will. No, that's the that's the title. This music will desecrate your soul, dot, dot, dot. Oh. Want to buy it? That's, that's the title that's of the album. That's pretty slick. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm direct with the market. Okay. Oh, we just saw that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Trevor Lucas with the Vadio Show, and I'm here with the legend, Jada Kiss. How are you, sir? How you doing, Trevor? All right, one question for you, man. I, I, you, you know, you've, you've been in the industry for a long time. You've done a lot of great things. A lot of people don't last as long as you do. Who are your influences? Uh, my influences are just people that come up to me and, and tell me how a song or an album got them through a situation, you know what I mean? Right. Or a brother that just came home from jail and... Let me know how one of my songs helped him get through his bid or, you know, just things like that. So yeah. that was a priceless moment that have nothing to do with finances or anything True. like that. That just send a chill down your spine that, you know what I mean, make you want to keep going. Yeah, good, good, good to hear, man. When it comes to influence and hearing those people say those things, um, it's very important out here to understand what's reality and what's fiction um in the industry a lot of people they'll look at you and instead inst instead of looking at you and saying yo i want to be in the industry i want to last long like jadakis did from a business standpoint the influence usually comes from the lyrics so when it comes to um influence knowing reality and fiction you got a lot of youth that don't understand the difference so what would you say to those people that look at you and they hear your lyrics more than they see who you are and what you're doing as a business? Hip hop is just a job like any other job. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you can listen to the lyrics and do, and don't do what the lyrics say. You don't look at a movie and do what exactly. you're looking at Arnold Schwarzenegger or Bruce Willis or none of them do. So it's the same thing, you know what yeah. I mean? It's a job. Yeah. Okay. At the end of the day, sometimes some of the lyrics or a song might be about a real situation yeah. that happened, but mm -hmm. that don't mean you're supposed to go out and do nothing that the lyrics are saying. That isn't what it's for. It's, a, it's entertainment at the well, end of um, the day. I appreciate you interviewing with us, man, and thank you so much from the team at the video show. Thank, all right? you, for, thank you for having not the ordinary questions, you know what I mean? Well, that you was know. Good. Those three questions were very good questions. I appreciate, you know what I mean, not just generic questions. I appreciate that, family. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Trevor Lucas, and we are back with the People Show, the Vadio Show, and Kevin the Moose Anderson. Now, when we left, we were talking about pretty much marketing and how this whole, uh, it's almost like a fiction addiction we have. It's you know a machine. I mean? It is a machine. And I want to get into the whole, is it an agenda subject in a second. But um, with the whole marketing thing, it's like uh, we... Like a phone comes out, right? You know, we got the iPhone 6. We know already that there's about to be a 7 coming out. Oh, yeah. And most of us can't afford all this good stuff, but how it's put out there, and we've been convinced that if you don't, we're more concerned with having instead of being. So now we, you got to have the J's. You got to have the, um, the new phone and all that. When for real, you can't even afford to pay your electricity. But the allure to, to have these things from the marketing and things like that is too strong. Yeah. Now, it's good for business, but, I mean, is it really good for society in, at the end of the day? I mean, you know, some people are able to earn a living off of it, but, you know, at what cost? You right, know? right, right. And so you just look at kids, man, and you can see that's, mm -hmm. that's the balance right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and, and like I said, I know marketing is an issue, and I, I don't want to beat up on uh, the rappers much more because I feel like music is a huge influence. But I want to get to the influence of uh, media, movies, things like that. Um, we had mentioned the NWA movie offline. Yeah. 
let's I, I want to speak on speak on that a little bit and also I want to get into other media outlets and how it's kind of changed people's minds and kind of guided us in crazy direction but the NWA movie that's all I'm gonna say you move on well what we were talking about was uh, I went to go see the movie with some of my young homies mm -hmm. uh, one of my young boys he's 21 and another guy he's 20 23 or 24 mm -hmm. and so you know they were like moose we want to see the movie with you we want to uh -huh. see what you think and after we looked at the movie and we started to talk, it just made me realize that I kind of had to set the record straight for them mm -hmm. on what happened. Nothing really about the group N.W.A., gotcha. none of the factual stuff, but just the direction that hip hop took after N.W.A. Yes. came out. Yes. And so I was explaining to them that prior to, you know, 89 or 90, mm -hmm. you had positive hip hop. Public on the radio and on video. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, those of us who were of age, mm -hmm. teenagers, preteens, who were listening to Public Enemy, Poor Righteous Teacher, mm -hmm. X Clan, mm -hmm. KRS One, mm -hmm. we were fortunate enough to hear a positive message yeah. behind some tight beat. And you wanted to be an intelligent black man. That's if all somebody you called you a thief, you like, what? You know what I mean? It's yeah. like you and you insulting me. That's all you knew. Mm -hmm. After NWA the message and the energy and the vibe Same. changed. And, you know, think think about it like this. After N.W.A. came out, if we were from L.A. Mm -hmm. and we were rappers and we wanted a record deal, mm -hmm. we had to wear black Chuck Taylors and have uh -huh. a car bouncing up and down. Yeah. And think yeah. about the contrast when you heard or you realized that the far side yeah, was from was L.A. From, I didn't believe it at first because exactly. they were my favorite group. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, to make it personal think about the east coast after nwa came out mm -hmm. the east coast reply or answer to nwa was just as hard uh-huh mm -hmm. you know that's where you get your jay-z's uh -huh. your mob deeps your right. Wu-Tang. It, it was a harder mm -hmm. representation mm -hmm. of the culture people like a tribe called quest and gangsta because they weren't talking about killing they would yeah. create they they were labeled quote unquote soft yep and got systematically pushed out of the out of the frame and then think about when you get to 95 96 far side trap called question yeah. roots yeah they were labeled alternative rap right or uh, uh, so you know you had backpackers that love to yeah. listen to so it right think yeah. about you know just the, the the concept of wanting to say something positive to your people put you in a whole different whole box another different line, whole another different tour right right and matter of fact a tour that's not making as much brand yeah exactly. because you're not being pushed down that major pipeline anymore mm -hmm. and also to get on kind of the agenda a little bit most of these record labels and these movie uh, companies, the big companies that put out the movies, they have stock and probably on prisons. So it doesn't benefit them to give you anything positive. Yeah, I mean, after NWA, if you were to look at 10 rap videos on Rap City, mm -hmm. at least four or five of them had somebody rapping on the other side of the bars. And that's my old, my old head lying. in my neighborhood used to say, they ain't doing nothing but throwing rocks at the prison. Mm -hmm. And that, that's exactly what it seems like, man. And I, I guess my next thing would be is I mean, what do, what do we do? What I mean, do each do? one teach one. Man, I would I would advise every parent that has some kids, mm -hmm. let them listen to the music of the past. Yeah. Take them to a concert. Yeah. You know, show them that the music that has come before mm -hmm. Beyonce and Lil Wayne, yeah. it, it, it's relevant. Right. It has a place. It has a time. It has a significance. And see, the other thing, we can't look at things as being so negative right now. Right, right. Because, you know, we're, we're in a unique situation where if a kid hears an old song on a movie, they're able to go on their phone and instantly get that, that group's discography. Yep. And then they're able to explore that group's discography mm -hmm. and, you know, journey into their musical legacy. Quick Shazam while it's playing to take you through it all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's a double-edged sword, yeah. man. All is not bad out here. No, it's not. It's not. And and I guess the only thing, like you had mentioned before, is because it's almost like the, the uh, magnifying glass is on it's the It's huge. Man. But it's we huge. have to quit giving power to that. It's out there. Yeah. But just like what we're trying to do with this show, we want to let you know there's some good things out here, too. Don't just think because this is all you're seeing through the mainstream that that's all there is. And people have to be receptive to the information. They have to want it. It's right. like with the radio show, you know. People, a lot of folks think 
that you know they're not jazz listeners. Right, right. Or, right. or jazz is over here Y'all in this stiff box. in the Kool Aid, bro. Yeah, I mean we we show you all <laughs> yeah. the different flavors of jazz. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I I love your show. And if you haven't checked it out, please check out Lessons in Jazz. And I want you to let people know um, exactly where to find you, how to find you, and how to just get more of what you all are putting on the airway. Okay. Well, you can check out Lessons in Jazz every Tuesday and Thursday from 5 to 7 on 88.1 WHOV. We also come on Sunday nights at 10 p.m. all the way to 6 a.m. Monday morning. And there's two other platforms that Lessons in Jazz is on. Okay. DJ B has Fresh Radio. Yeah. We come on Fresh Radio every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. to noon and every Saturday morning from uh, 8 a.m to 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, probably our biggest accomplishment in the last couple of years is Lessons in Jazz is on XM. Yeah. Channel 142. Uh, XM has just launched the Historical Black College Channel. Nice. And so uh, we were fortunate enough to be on five days a week. We're on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So that's Channel 142. You can check uh, the HBCU website or uh, page and get the time great 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 well ladies and gentlemen what i need you to do is guard your eyes and ears if you listen to fools long enough you become one <laughs> so basically let's let's kind of feed our mind make a good balance and feed our mind with things that make things better for us that uh you know move us in the right direction like lessons in jazz or the radio show all right this is the people show this was music media and the matrix and this is my man kevin the moose anderson and we'll see you next time a message from one of our proud sponsors. Live life well like the Myrtles at Old Town. Our spacious apartment homes offer luxury amenities with security access entry. Select homes offer washer and dryer, vaulted ceilings, private balcony or patio. And yes, we are pet friendly. Our friendly and knowledgeable staff will gladly walk you step by step through the process of finding a home that fits you perfectly. No matter the size, one, two, or three bedrooms, we can accommodate your needs. And while you stroll the property, stop by the clubhouse where you'll have full access to the movie room, the workout room, the computer room, and much, much more. So whether you like the towers or our garden style, when you see what we have to offer, you'll want to make the Myrtles at Old Town your new home. A message from one of our proud sponsors. A lot of people that feel as if the media and music has a very large part in what we're seeing today with our society, and especially our youth. Yes. So it's almost like we have an identity crisis due to what we continue to feed our eyes and ears. What's your take on media and music? Because there was one time that hip hop had a forum mm-hmm. about the music wondering if it actually was the cause of this mm-hmm. and we got a unanimous no I don't think you were involved in that mm-hmm. I want to ask you you know how would you take it there's an interesting point you made about um, does the music have uh, d- d- did music or artists media on, on the side as well have any responsibility to to what was being broadcast over say the last 20 years the argument was no most people said no, artists don't have respo- um, uh, or don't have the responsibility. The, the responsibility is left to the institutions. The taxpayers pay. Uh, the institutions have failed, so now you want to put it on the artists, or the problems have fallen onto the artists um, uh, by default. Yes, I understand that argument. I was also part of that argument as well. I was part of that argument, but my take on it was more to the s- <coughs> to the point that. It takes a special individual to speak up on behalf of a community. All artists are not 
leaders. But just because you run a conscious record don't mean you're a conscious person. And so you and li likewise, just because you thug it on the corner doesn't mean you don't love Christ or whatever. You don't love God. Or you don't strive for peace or joy or knowledge yourself just because I came out the strip club doesn't mean I'm not on my way to the library. So you can't really judge a book by its cover. A tree is known by its fruit. So if in fact you are not that kind of person, I would say you're exempt from that from that responsibility because you can get yourself hurt. Um, uh, literally, it whether it be your career, your physical life, your mind state, your reputation, whatever it is, if these things matter to you, then speaking truth to power on behalf of the people, you just can't go there. You can't, it's not your place. So I say, no, it's not the responsibility of the average artist. The average dude, just get your money, sing your record, try to be popular. Do whatever you could do. But some of us are awake, and we know what it means to stand in front of people that admire you. Raise your arm one way, they're raising their arm the same way. Say this, and they say it. Say that, and they say, wear this, drink this, eat this. Sound like it, and you have whole communities mimicking what it is you are. I think there's some responsibility to that. Uh, <clears throat> I think MC should be licensed to speak. Uh, the same way that you have martial artists, everybody could practice Kung Fu, no doubt. But when you say you are a professional martial artist, your hands get registered with the local precinct. Because now you, you, you're real about what you're doing and you can actually kill a person doing what you did, put some restraint on you, and it also protects you because if you ever have to go there, the police already knew who you was and your hands were registered. Same thing should be with MCs. Your words can kill people. This is, this is what people do not understand. Starting with the MC, his or herself, onto whoever they're speaking to. Your words can kill. So you should be licensed to speak before mass groups of people and not licensed like censorship. Just here's three places. This is what it means to be hip hop. <coughs> or better yet, <coughs> excuse me, this is what it means to be a musician in America. This is what it means to be a musician in America. You get a tax break. You follow these guidelines, you're going to give you this tax break, your kids go to school for free. Some old craziness, like if you say, look, I'm going to register my, I'm going to seek the license. So there's going to be some restriction on me, no doubt. But within that restriction, I get empowered because there's a government that recognizes the power of my voice. So this also goes in two different directions. You got me thinking about something crazy. I need to get off of this right now, but... <laughs> This because in actuality, your question is deep in terms of the responsibility of the person in front of a crowd. And it's a debate because, again, everyone doesn't have the mind even to uh, take that responsibility seriously. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. It just means you're not there. But to the ones who are, and this is where <clears throat> I want to put an emphasis, those who are aware are the ones who are not doing anything which is why the world is the way it is. <clears throat> Too many people that have knowledge are using their knowledge for themselves. And, right, and look at this, rightfully so. You spent a hundred grand on your education. Why do you have to share that with anybody? <clears throat> you, you, you stayed up late. Everybody was at the party chilling. You was at a book. <clears throat> now, 20 years later, you're sitting on top Everybody else that was partying is now struggling because we see this in history. It goes over and over and over and over and over. This is history. The one who stays home and studies and fills that head with knowledge and sees a whole new world gets that world. The other people who say, nah, 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 bam, bam, you stay on the wayside. Now I'm sitting up top and you're saying I should come out of my paradise 
to mess with you when we both had the same opportunity. This is, this is a conservative thought, but this is where all the great black thinkers are. They, they, they railed in the 90s. Everybody railed. Yo, this is crazy. Bush is bugging. The system's going to collapse. Oh, they told Dr. Cornell West, get out of here. You're, you're, who are you? They threw him out of Harvard. <laughs> okay, get out of here. Cornell wrote books, said so much about the state of, of black America, but also America in general. They didn't want to hear him. They didn't want to hear him. Tavis Smiley, he got fired from BET. That's why he's, he's down the road journalist that he is and doing very well. But look at, look at, look at us. Look at us. Look at us. So with that, <clears throat> if the people who have knowledge keep it to themselves, live in their mansions, chilling, and they're protected by the universe, it's right. They're right. But to solve the problems that we're discussing, those who are comfortable in their knowledge and in their life are going to have to get uncomfortable for the rest of the world to live. And this is the hardest piece right here. Nobody wants, nobody, thank you, no, nobody wants to give up their comfort zone. A, a, a last example here, just us right here, okay, right now. Kelton's my man. Okay, been working with him for years. Okay, he calls me up. Yo, I need you down here in Virginia. Now, keep in mind, I think when we got this call, I was in France. I was in um, I don't know where I was. Uh, it's a place called uh, uh, Savigny Le Temple in uh, in France, somewhere about twenty miles outside of Paris. So I'm chilling. I'm out there finishing up an album. I'm enjoying France, got my Italian buddies over here. I'm like, yeah. But every time we open the paper, Ferguson, somebody choked, another New York, somebody else over here, somebody else. And all of our, all that was, matter of fact, while, while Baltimore was burning, I was in Paris, okay, rocking 6,000 French people. They was like, yo, we was getting it in. Leave the stage, turn on the BBC. My people dead in the street. Now, there's a bunch of Americans in France. Black Americans doing very well in France. Uh, you know, all, all of everybody there. Other rappers, sports figures, everybody there. But which one of us felt like we should come home? And and this is the example right here. It's that. I worked and earned my place. There's no reason for me to come back here. There's no reason. <clears throat> I'm a man, a father. I have three children. My wife, I don't know. I, they're chilling. That's it. That, why, why do I have to now come back here? Well, here's why. Because if you are conscious, if you are awake, if you know that there is really no you, you are really a subject of your people. You are a principle of your people. You are an asset of your people. If you hide yourself, your people perish. So come out of your place. Like here, I mean, I love coming to Virginia on another level, but y'all get snow. I can't deal with that. That's not my place of comfort, snow. My voice gets raspy. I can't do the shows I want to do. I'm getting tight. My muscles are that's why I live in California, okay? I like the heat. I want tropical weather. This year I'm not going to have it. Why? Because there's too much craziness going on right now. There's too much. It's now reached a certain level. And then with world politics, African Americans have a really good shot right now. If, in fact, we are made aware. So it's not just me coming out of my place of comfort which for me is California or Europe or Africa in that order. Uh, South Africa, Ethiopia is off the chain. She go to Ethiopia. This, but you're not coming back here. At least your mind is not. You know, Ethiopia is South Africa. People are rising up there. You, you land in South Africa. You, 
feel the energy like, yo, these people want action here. They're sick of the nonsense here. They're not passive in South Africa, not at all. France, that's, that's all on the TV. Why was I finishing my album in France? Because that's the ghetto. That's the hood. The whole of Paris. They sell us here. Paris is a white tablecloth with a wine glass and some when Keith and Prince was out. That's not Paris at all. Par the whole of Paris is like Brooklyn, like in the eight. The whole of Paris. Not the whole of France. France still got Marseille, Lyon, Nice. You still got these little resorts you can go to and chill with the rich people at. Okay, that's where. But the city, Paris? <laughs> You talk about real hood life, that, they living it out right there. Because, and why? All businesses are paying up to 60% taxes. 60. 60% taxes. Every dollar you make, 60 cent of it goes to the government. Every business is enslaved to the French government. Every French business. This is why the country's the way it is. But African Americans, as a government, can step to the French people and say, yo, we got jobs for you. We can help you. We can do it. And, what, and how do we help? First of all, well, I'm not going to get into that, but it was, um, it was Socrates' theory of the social contract, the social contract theory, where you get craft people together, and you build my house, I cook your food. We both cook it. He does security. Uh, but he's going to build his house, and I'm going to cook his food. He's going to secure us all. Then somebody else got medicine. Well, he don't build a house. He don't cook food. He don't do security. But he got medicine. So we use his medicine. He heals us. We give him security, house, and food. This is what, right, right. But, but there's no one anymore. There's no unity anymore. There's nothing united. So this is a long answer to the media question. <laughs> Today, six corporations control all major media in the United States, including the principal television networks. These six corporate entities, in turn, control the information being broadcast on a daily basis. The average American adult watches more than four hours of television each day. The constant flow of entertainment, news, and information that is consumed by the American public shapes their perception of the reality in which they live. By controlling the dissemination of information, broadcasters and their corporate heads are able to control the masses. The constant, carefully shaped messages on television guide the public to predetermined conclusions. Therefore, TV has become a weapon of mass persuasion. Principal 